Hello Internet. I'm shameless author and self-promoter Kit Cox, also known as Major Jag Union. You might remember my books from such amazing places as Behind Me on Jim's Shelf. Well, welcome to Merlin's Archery Adventures. I will be completely honest and say one of my favourite parts, uh, the job that I do, is, is probably getting the messages and the emails from, uh, from people asking me questions, um, telling me about interesting things that's going on in the archery world, telling me about how they're getting on uh, with, uh, with their archery. And I, I love getting those, so please don't ever stop, uh, stop sending them. But what I thought I would do for this particular video is um, I'd probably answer some of your questions on, um, on a video. So I thought that'd be a little bit interesting. Um, so hopefully um, we'll go through and we'll all learn something. Hopefully. I mean, I might not know the answer to some of these, but uh, we shall see. Um, yeah, and the other thing I feel like I should mention is the fact that uh, I am dyslexic. Um, I don't know if, uh, if you knew that, if you've probably read any of uh, my responses to your emails then you'd probably pick up on that. But um, I do have a hell of a game pronouncing some of these names, especially the ones uh, from Tumblr. So please bear with me if I mince anyone's name. But without further ado, let's have a little look at uh, some of the messages you've sent me and hopefully uh, answer some of those questions. So the first one is from a Darren Travers on Facebook. And he, uh, he has asked three, three questions actually, been a bit greedy personally, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, the first question is, is a beard a must for the complete traditional archer? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't got a beard, then can you really? consider yourself a traditional archer? I don't know, that's probably a topic for a whole other video, but uh, but moving on. Uh, the next uh, question is, what type of knife should accompany an archer? Now, I have got into the habit of not taking a knife with me, just because I've started traveling really light. I take my bow and my, my bow quiver and, and that's about it. But when I do take a knife, I want something strong. I want something um, substantial, um, preferably full tank, so it's um, a real solid, steel blade, good quality steel. It doesn't have to be the fanciest knife in the world, but just something good for digging arrows out of tree stumps or, uh, or targets or something, or whatever you tend to be shooting at. But yeah, something substantial. Um, obviously, be careful when you are carrying a knife, especially don't, don't carry it anywhere in public, um, it can get you into all sorts of trouble. So just please be careful when you are carrying a knife about. But if you are gonna take a knife, make sure it's um, strong enough. Um, some of these sort of flick knives aren't really strong enough for, for digging arrows out and you can break them and end up hurting yourself. So please be careful uh, with, when using knives. And also remember a knife isn't a weapon, it's a tool. And if you, uh, if you go with that mindset then Hopefully uh, everyone will be a lot safer. Do 3D targets produce more focus than target bosses? Now I'd have to say yes. Uh, personally, this is this is from my point of view. Um, I much prefer shooting at a 3D animal, uh, especially something if, if there's a point on the animal I can really focus on and really draw my attention to that point. The trouble with target bosses, I find, um, especially with the big colourful feet of faces, you've got lots of big areas of colour and it's easy to focus on something big but that's not what you want to be doing. You want to be focusing on something small. I think I did a video a while back um, called Aim Small, Miss Small, and that is, it's all about reducing the, the size of the target you can look at. So I personally think that I do get more of a focus from a, a, a 3D animal uh, rather than a, a, a target boss. But that, that's just me. Um, some people prefer shooting target bosses, but that, that's, that's, uh, that's just me. So Darren, I hope that's answered some of your questions for you. Moving on, we have, uh, we have one on the Twitters now from uh, House Broken Geek, and he has asked, um, has there been a Hollywood film archer yet sh that shows the correct technique? Also, how many flannel shirts do you own? No, what a question. Let's answer the first bit first. Yeah, there are hundreds of, of um, archers in films and um, not a lot of them do it right. But I've since sort of, sort of worked out that Hollywood archery isn't real archery. Um, although I would expect them to get it right, there's a hell of a lot of mistakes out there. And, and if you're an archer, if you're watching this video, chances are you probably are an archer and you can pick up those mistakes straight away. And it, it does take me out of the movie. But I understand that it has to look right from a filmmaker's point of view, not necessarily an archer's point of view. But saying that, one of the best films I've seen for um, a real nice archery technique, I think I mentioned it in another video, it's probably Disney's Brave. That um, the, 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 the way the arrow paradoxes, the way she sort of releases, it's a really nice, um, 
representation of, of archery really there are some there are some shockers out there lord of the rings was a, a classic i remember seeing lots of arrows on wrong sides of bows and all sorts of weird things but it's it's a movie at the end of the day it's not real life i once made a video on the hunger games and how the archery wasn't quite right in that and i only made the point being that uh, Jennifer Lawrence was taught by an Olympic style archer and then she was put into a more of a hunting field style, style environment and it didn't quite look right but that's by the by anyway. There's probably Merida from, from Disney's Brave is probably the, 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 the best representation of uh, technique I've seen. I'm sure, that, I'm sure there's also great ones out there but that's the one that sticks in my mind at the moment. And the other important question or probably the most important part of this question is how many flannel shirts do I own? Um, well I am one. Two, three, four, five, six. And I happen to know that there is one in the wash. Yeah, I hope, uh, hope that answers your question. Thank you, Housebroken Geek. <sighs> Moving on, we have one on the Facebooks from Jonathan Ingram. And he's, uh, he's asked, I've seen people using string silencers as a way of tuning the bow to accept weaker arrows by slowing the string. Could the same possibly be done in reverse to increase string speed slightly and make use of stiffer arrows as compounds do with speed buttons? Right, well, uh, I mean, uh, I, yeah, I suppose so. Um, yeah, <laughs> in, in short, you can, you can change the speed of a bow um, with the silencers. Um, a general rule of thumb is the closer um, you move the silencers to the middle of the bow, the slower the string becomes and the quieter it becomes. The further out you move them, the quicker the string and the more noise it adds. Um, but yeah, you, you can you can tune um, you can tune a bow like that. I tend not to though. I always try and tune the arrows to the bow, not the bow to the arrows. Um, arrows are. Um, uh, a consumable so you are going to go through arrows and you're going to go through arrows a lot quicker than you are a bow um, so yeah I would I would I mean if you want to use a silencer put the silencer on tune the arrows to the bow with the silencer on okay next we had an email from now I'm so sorry if I mispronounce your name it's Ro Hafferson and it's a really great question actually it says uh, the common age-old question of any rookie trad archer which bow to choose between recurve or longbow or flatbow um, how do you compare those and which one do you prefer or recommend? Now, it's such a personal preference. Um, I like both and I flip between the two. Sometimes I'll shoot nothing but a recurve for six months and then I'll get all caught up on a, a, a longbow or a flatbow and get obsessed with that for six months. It, I'm, I'm quite fickle really when it comes to, <laughs> to that sort of thing. But yeah, there, there isn't, I mean, they, they have different benefits. Obviously a recurve is a much quicker bow. Um, but a little more critical, where uh, a long bow or a flat bow is, is um, it's a slower bow and a bit more forgiving. So it, I, when people come and say they want to get involved in traditional archery and they, they want a bow to get started with, generally I tend to point them towards a flat bow to get started because it's probably the easiest bow to shoot. It's quite simple, it's easy, um, it's, it's not easy but it's easier, it's, um, it's more forgiving. And it's um, yeah, it's just a bow that I think it, it's good for getting a step up into uh, to to archery. So I would always generally point people towards um, a longbow or a flat bow to to begin with. But if you want to shoot recurve, I suggest you shoot recurve. I've I've got a a real it's almost a bee in my bonnet about it. Where a lot of clubs they someone comes and they ultimately want to shoot say a compound bow, but the clubs say, oh no, you've got to shoot recurve first. And I can understand why. But ultimately, if you want to shoot a compound, then shoot a compound. If you want to shoot longbow, shoot longbow. If you want to shoot traditional, shoot traditional. If you want to shoot target recurve, shoot target recurve. It's so important when getting into archery that you do what makes you happy. Um, shoot what you enjoy. Um, if you're shooting what you enjoy, you're going to stick at it and enjoy it a whole, whole lot more than if you're sort of forced to, to shoot something that you're not really comfortable with. Um, but yeah, that's... <laughs> That's, that's that really, just shoot what you're happy with and I can't really pick between a, a recurve and a, a, a flat bow. At the moment I'm shooting a hybrid um, a long bow or flat bow and I'm really enjoying that. Um, I like the hybrid because it's, it's sort of, it's not quite as black and white as this but you've got 
um, you've got the, the speed of a, a recurve but the stability of um, of a flat bow so I'm, I'm quite liking the hybrid at the moment but uh, anyway buddy I hope that answers your question and thanks for sending that one in right then we have on the tumbler we have um, <laughs> rhinocycles <laughs> which is a great great tumbler name um, and the question is uh, my wife and I are thinking about getting into archery great decision great decision um, any suggestions on what is a good beginner bow now again that depends on what sort of archery you're looking at getting into whether or not you want to get into um, the traditional side or the, the, the sort of target side um, traditional side a good beginner bow I don't think you can go wrong with a, um, a buck trail black hawk I think they're a great bow to get started as I mentioned before in the previous uh, email very very simple way of getting into the traditional side of archery if it's a target style archery something like a, um, a Rio Supercast riser with some, some limbs, something like that, or an um, SF Forge Plus. Um, there's, there's so many bows out there. Um, they're, all, they're all great, really. If it's a compound, I quite like, for a beginner's compound, I quite like the Bear Cruiser. I think that's a nice little bow. Um, really adjustable and uh, will, will last you a good long while. So I hope that answers your question, uh, Rhinocycles. Great name, great name. Okay, moving on on the uh, on the tumbler again. We have dark and an embers, dark and an embers, dark and an embers. I, I told you I struggle with these tumbler names. I'm really sorry. And they have said, um, I was wondering if you had any tips for people who are interested in learning to make their own arrows. Um, yeah, I mean, making your own arrows is fantastic. It's a really enjoyable um, exercise. I enjoy making arrows. The re I, I love making wooden arrows. The reason why I switched from, from wood to um, carbon is not because I wanted a, to sort of get a, an edge up on scores or anything. It's just that I spent too much time on, on wooden arrows. I became obsessed with wooden arrows. I had to sort of uh, match the weights, match the spines, uh, check them for straightness, um, crest them, everything. I had to do, do the works on them. And then if I lost one, I was heartbroken. If you're interested in making your own arrows, you've got to invest in a good jig. I mean, it's it's more of an expensive outlay to get going because you've got to buy the gear, uh, jig, you've got to buy the glue, you've got to buy all that stuff. But once you've got that stuff, all you really need is the feathers uh, and the shafts, and you can it works out cheaper in the long run. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a bigger expense straight away, but it works out cheaper in the long run. But you um you really can have a lot of fun uh, making arrows. But um, if you're ask, asking for tips, I'd say if you're using feathers. Uh, and you're using something like uh, NPV or um, Fletch Tight or something, really let that dry. Uh, each feather, you've got to let it go for about 20 minutes before you put the other one on. Um, and really, really take your time. Don't rush it. If you rush it, you end up with messy arrows, and nobody wants messy arrows. So, um, yeah, just take your time. Um, get some get some decent equipment. The, 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 there's loads of jigs out there. Um, there's uh, oh, the bare paw jig. There's... Um, boning jigs they're pretty good uh, you know they're, they're all pretty decent jigs as long as it's solid a uh, bit of weight to it you want a, a weighty jig and, and away you go so yeah that's probably uh, the best tip I can give you on that one so the next message we have here is from uh, Ace Brad from Tumblr and he's put hi Jim just wondering if you could perhaps give me a little advice I've recently taken up traditional archery I've not got a flashy bow but it's not a cheap nasty one either. A buck trail antelope, 60 inch, 40 pounds at 28 inches. I like it and it handles well for me, but my hang up is the arrows, particularly sp spine weight. Eastern trads and GTX hunters, 400s are still not quite bullets at 28, inch, 28 inches. Should I go for 340s or 300s, or should I actually go the other way and gain a little length back? Draw is 28 inches also. Thanks, Chris. Okay, Chris, right. Well, to me, at 40 pounds, um, 400 spine seems really stiff to me. Um, you're looking at 400 spine arrows for 50 plus pounds bows, especially at 28 inches. Um, yeah, that, that that seems way too way too stiff for me. So I'd come the other way. I'd maybe try um, maybe try some 500s, maybe try some 600s, um, do some bare shaft testing and see see what comes out best. But I would say that those are um, those are way too stiff, um, especially if you're going to 300 spine. That that's crazy. That's really really stiff for a 40 pound bow. You're looking at this sort of um, you know 60 plus 
pound compound bow shooting three hundred spine arrows. So yeah, you, you need to go the other way, go weaker um, on those, and I think you'll probably uh, you get some nice uh, nice arrow flight out of a, a slightly weaker arrow out of that antelope. I mean, it's not a, a fantastically quick bow anyway, if I remember rightly. So yeah, you're prob probably looking around the six hundred spine. Um, Six, six, five hundred spine. But your best bet, if um, get a couple of each, get a couple of each spine. Those arrows, I'm pretty sure you can buy individually. So buy, buy the arrow individually and try, um, try doing a bare shaft test. See which way, see which way they come out and um, uh, and go from there. But that's probably your uh, your best bet. So thanks for that, Chris. Uh, thanks for getting in touch. And uh, yeah, let me know how you get on. This next message is from Coupler Duck on on the Tumblr. And it says, hey Jim, I was wondering if you have any advice for people trying to get into art, into the archery business. I remember following your blog way back when and you getting picked up by Merlin. And that was really exciting. Oh, thanks. Um, I'm a recent college grad who's been shooting since I was six years old. And more and more I'm really realizing, really, I just want to either make bows for a living or do some active training or education for people trying to get into archery like you do any pro tips um uh yeah um i guess i mean i i'm incredibly lucky to be doing what i'm doing and i i i, I know that it's it, it really is it is great to be doing doing my passion for a living um and it really is great uh, working in the archery business but i will be completely honest there is a downside to working uh, working in the archery world and um i know when i got the job they said you do realize you won't do as much shooting. And I said, ah, nonsense, I'll do more shooting. I'll shoot every day. And it's it's true, um, I, I don't shoot as much as I as I used to. Um, and it's a real shame, I, I really miss it, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't always get opportunity to shoot. So I, I as, but as a result of that, I do treasure the times I, I get to go shooting. Where I was shooting before, I was shooting maybe every other day, maybe even every day. Um, now, if I get out once or twice a week, um, it's 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 good. But I love those times when I'm out shooting. I absolutely love it. I drink it in, and I can't I can't get enough of it. So there is a downside to working in the archery business: is you won't shoot as much as um, as as you would before. But getting into it, yeah, I, I just approach some businesses, um, just try and sell yourself. That's 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 the only that's a bit of a cop out answer, really. I don't really know what I can I can say. It just you just got to be. I mean, I was I think I was just in the right place at the right time, and I, I got really lucky. Where I think if you uh, if you if you if you're trying to get into it, making it your career, then you've got to just you just got to get out there, sell yourself, approach just approach people, um, approach lo local archery stores. Um, if you want to get into training or education, um, get qualified. I'm not sure where you're from, but um, get qualified. Get um, get certified and sort of make it on your own do you make up your own archery school um, teach people just get people I think the, the best thing you can do is be enthusiastic and get and if you can get other people to be enthusiastic about archery then that's that's half the battle but uh, but yeah I, I hope that's helped it pro probably hasn't much I've sort of rambled on on that one and yeah you kind of caught me off guard on that one so uh, <laughs> but uh, thanks for getting in touch that's brilliant. So uh, moving on, we've got, oh my gosh, you're really trying to catch me out with these names. A, a Lobelowin from uh, from Tumblr again. It says, uh, hey Jim, was wondering whether shooting a bow was legal um, on public land such as Epping Forest. Not hunting, just stumping for practice. Now that is a tough one. Um, technically, archery equipment isn't classed as an offensive weapon. It's sporting goods and it's not illegal to have sporting goods anywhere so you can take your archery equipment anywhere but you have to use common sense you really do when taking out your archery equipment um, I mean I, I once uh, I was trying to uh, I wanted to write an article on uh, the subject of stomping so I, I, I uh, wrote to the police and asked them their opinion on it categorically whether or not it was illegal to take your bow out and shoot in the forest and the answer they came back was pretty, it was pretty clear as mud actually um, but what I got from it, it was no, it's not illegal, but if someone was to report you, it would be down to the discretion of the police officer that came to you whether or not you would be arrested or sent on your way or have your gear confiscated. Now, you, you've, 
archery, as, as fun as it is, and as safe as archery is, there is always the potential to cause real injury or death to someone. And we, we, we must remember that. We are, we are shooting sharp objects out of a potentially sort of high pounded bows and we can do a lot of damage with those bows. So we need to be really careful when going on public land. If you want to go stumping, your best bet is to find, um, find a farmer or something. Um, if, if you're in that sort of, if there's any in your part of the world, um, and ask, find some private land and ask permission if you can use it. Most farmers don't mind because there's, there's, there's lots of, they've got lots of land not doing anything. As long as you're safe and you're courteous to the environment, a lot of farmers don't have a problem with it, but ask permission. It's always important to ask permission, um, especially if you're out there shooting. It's, um, it's unfortunately, there are some people out there who, quite frankly, don't have a couple of brain cells to rub together. And it's always those guys that give archery a bad name. They're the guys that, You've all seen the pictures where someone's shot a cat with a crossbow or something, whatever. There's there's always some, some idiot out there doing that and, and I don't want anybody to be tarred with that brush. So it's important that whatever we do out there, we've got to be safe and we've got to we've got to follow the rules and um but yeah just to cover yourselves. Although technically it's it's probably not illegal, I would I would find some private land and ask permission. And then you, you're safe then, you, you can do whatever you want and, and, and just just have some fun without sort of having to worry about sort of injuring anyone or, or there's always something bad could happen. So yeah, just use common sense and um, yeah, get get some permission and, um, and, and use some private land if you can, if that's available to you. But uh, anyway, I hope that helps. Um, but uh, yeah, moving on, we have... Um, Oh, these Tumblr names are driving me crazy. Thema, Thema Holoki, Thema Holokamiantri. We're going to go with that. Thema Holokamiantri from, uh, from the Tumblr. And they say, I'm a beginner. I did a set of lessons last year. I used a recurve and I would really love a bow of my own. I like the horse bow and the long bows, but I don't know if I would, uh, if it would be appropriate for a beginner. Or whether I should stick with the recurve. Any advice? Now I've mentioned this um, a little bit further back on one of the other messages. Um, if that's ultimately what you want to shoot, then shoot that. If you want to shoot horsebow, shoot horsebow. It's there's no point shooting a bow that you're not enjoying shooting. If you're doing something you don't enjoy, you're not going to stick at it. Or if you do something you you are enjoying, you're going to get a passion for it and you're going to stick at it and it's going to be a lifelong hobby. Um, I think it's important to, to sort of learn the basics on, on whatever bow uh, you're given when you do your lessons. So chances are it's going to be a um, uh, recurve. Whether, whether or not that's got a sight on it or not, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. You're probably going to be given one of those bows to learn the absolute basics on. But once you've learned the basics and you do, and you do want to shoot a long bow, you do want to shoot um, a horse bow, try them out. Um, that's probably your best bet. I mean, I, I don't know where you are in the world. Um, if you ever want to pop in, um, if you are in the UK and you ever want to pop into to one of our shops, pop in, try a horse bow, try a long bow, see what floats your boat. You might not like them, but at least you've tried them. So that's your best bet. Um, yeah, give that a go. Well, I hope, hope that's helped. So the next message we have is from uh, Banner Mulliver um, from, from Tumblr. Hello, I'm currently shooting an FS Forge Plus. Uh, I have a few questions about waxing strings. Um, I have to, uh, do I have to keep the bow set up for a while after I've waxed it, uh, or is this something that I should be doing before I shoot? Thank you, love your page. Thank you very much. I love you too. But um, yeah, it's waxing the string, that's something that people don't do enough of, in my opinion. Um, I don't think you can wax your string enough. Uh, personally. Um, in an ideal world I'd probably like to wax my string before I use it um, every time. Not always the case but um, but yeah it's important to keep your string waxed and um, it doesn't really matter if you if if you uh, if you wax your string then pack it away that's not gonna hurt that's not gonna hurt at all. Um, I personally tend to wax before I shoot rather than when I finish but that's just me. When I'm packing away I just want to pack away 
and they usually go. I don't want to spend time waxing strings. But yeah, just make sure um, you put plenty of wax on there and really rub it in. Make sure it sort of permeates into the, the, the sort of strands of the string, um, giving your string sort of uh, a longer life, basically, keeping it uh, keeping it better for longer. But yeah, in, in short, it doesn't really matter um, if you do it before or after. I tend to do it before, but that's just me personally. Um, but yeah, just make sure you wax it is the important thing. Um, hope that was useful. Uh, moving on and the last one here we have from a uh, James Turner on the Facebook and he asks simply what is your favorite bow now that's a tough question that's a real tough question um, my favorite bow at the moment is my um, Timber Creek Cottonmouth which is, um, which is a bow that's just about to be released. Um, I was lucky enough to have one before they, um, they released and uh, I'm over the moon with it. And that's my, that's my go-to bow at the moment. But I think my favorite bow will always be my Bear Kodiak takedown. I love that bow and I haven't shot her for a couple of weeks and I feel incredibly guilty about that. So um, that is probably um, my favorite bow. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm fickle. I, I mean, this time last year, probably my favorite bow was probably my Orsable, awesome probably. That's, and before that, probably, I don't know, Bear Grizzly, maybe a, maybe an Osprey, I don't know, I'm fickle, I change. <laughs> but at the, at the moment, it's it's the bow, I'm shooting, my go-to bow at the moment is my Timber Creek, uh, Timber Creek Cottonmouth. Uh, but probably my all-time favourite is the, the, the Bear Kodiak takedown. But uh, that's it, we've come to the end of, uh, well there, there are more questions, but um, I don't want the video to be too long, so maybe I'll do another one at a later date. So, But if you've ever got any questions, feel free to drop them, uh, drop them to me. My email uh, address is in the description, or you can find me on Facebook or, uh, or through the Merlin page. But, um, but yeah, I hope you found that useful. I've just been in the cabin rambling on for a, for a good while, so I hope you haven't found it too boring. Well anyway, you take care, shoot straight, and I'll see you on the internet. Bye bye. Spill a bit of tea on my shirt. That's right, I've got six more down there. But for a, a, a sort of a, a cheaper end, entry level bow, it actually it looks quite nice. I mean, it's the, the riser is made of uh, hard maple 